And don't answer lightly. Who's God judging? In this passage, who's he judging? No. Mm -mm. He is not, I'm yelling now. That's for like for theatrical effect. (laughs) He is not judging you. All of the judgment that we deserved, that God, the judge of all, had every right to administer, did not fall on us. Do you understand me? So who is God judging? I like that. Yes, sir. You keep that going, big guy. So who is God judging? The judgment of God fell on his son, Jesus Christ. All of the judgment of God fell on Jesus the Son. And as you get up and live your life, Jesus Christ is standing before the Father on your behalf. It's absolutely amazing. In fact, I want you to I want you to understand something. So, can can you tell me what your name is? Can I ask? Can I use you as kind of a? Yeah, my name is Leheven. Leheven. That's the coolest name I've heard in about twenty years. <laughs> Leheven. Very cool. I wonder what your mother was thinking about when she did that. Very cool. God named you that. She said, "God named you." It's beautiful. This is what I do. I'm just going to tell you what I do, and I do it every day, and I'm sick of doing it. Every single person I meet, this is what goes on. My mind. Oh, here's just another person. You're just another person. Now, I'm not going to think that about anybody named Leheven. You can't think of that way. <laughs> but all you Bobs and Jims, yeah, forget it, okay? <laughs> but here's what I'm re- When I read this passage, I realize we've come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, that when I meet you, here we are. We're not just having a conversation. It's not two people having a conversation. When you get up and make your coffee, if you could see the, the heavenly hell. I, I haven't had time to look this up in between the services, but you know Elijah, uh, Ahab and Jezebel send this. I think they send the soldiers to arrest Elijah and execute him. And his servants totally freaked out. I think it's Elijah. It might it might be Elisha. If it's not, you can judge me later. <laughs> and his servant says says to Elijah, "Dude, we're 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 toast." That's a modern translation. <laughs> and Elijah says. Look around you. Look around you. What do you see? He says, the servant looked up and he saw the warriors of the heavenly host. And Elijah basically turns to the servant and says, you worried about these chumps that have come to arrest me? Look and see what's real. Guys, look and see what's real. So when I sit down and talk with you, do you know what God is saying? God is saying to me, Steve, La heaven is real. She's my child. She's not just another person. I died on the cross for her. She is worth more than rubies. She is of infinite value to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's why C.S. Lewis, in his most famous sermon, The Weight of Glory, said, you have never met a mere mortal. No such thing. Every person you've encountered is a person created in the image of God that Jesus Christ died for and loves. And so the challenge for us is if we would begin to see With the eyes of God, our lives would be completely changed. And this is what God's been speaking to me this year. You are not some average guy. I don't know what your struggles are. Your name is Gabriel. I had a vision from God. His name was Gabriel. Everybody should wear name tags. It's awesome. But I want to tell you what I've been praying for the last few years is when I meet somebody... that I would, I would see them like they were my own son. Because that's how the Father sees you and me. I had four kids who at different times were different. My son Jeff's here with me. He was a pretty good lacrosse player, but I remember in the years that he played sports, a lot of times he was overlooked. He was a good player, but more just kind of steady in the middle. And I remember, you, you ever thought about that? Your kids, you said, I just wish... Wish at one time in, in my son or my daughter's life that they'd have a coach that would see him like I'd see him. Not, not, not to be great athletic, but just to know what an incredible person they are. When you meet Gabriel, I want you to look at him and see he's incredible. He is just not some dude. 
He is part of the, the heavenly witness. And when Gabriel stands before fa- the Father, who's the judge of all, do you know who the Father sees, Gabriel? You need to know this. When God the Father looks at you, do you know what he sees? He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus, the media of the new covenant. It's like you're standing before the Father, and Jesus goes, hey, I got it, bud. And he stands and says, Dad, I know Gabriel's made some mistakes. Not as many as Andrew's, but, <laughs> but I just want you to know I got him covered. I got him covered. Do you realize that? So there's no judgment. Romans 8 says there's no, there's no judgment for anyone who's in Christ Jesus. We're redeemed and we're forgiven. We don't have to look over our shoulder. We don't have to try to win God's approval. And so as we live our life, we realize we're part of this gigantic celebration that God is cheering us on. He's not judging us. So have you ever, let me just finish with this. I'm doing pretty good on time. I got it. I'm going to tell you just one illustration. I'm going to tell you exactly how it happened. I'm going to give you one questionable word. I don't, don't want you to be offended by it. You'll get over it. Hear, hear the point. Because it's a true story. I don't know. Three or four years ago, five years ago, the Lions went 0-16. By the way, I just want to say something. Explain this to me after all these years. Here we are at Kensington. We raised all this money to send Dave and Eric and the team to start a church in Salt Lake City. We raise the money and send them to Salt Lake City, and we stay in Detroit without the money. Tell me how that works. <laughs> the people that go to Salt Lake from Detroit should be paying the Detroit people to leave. <laughs> okay. What does that have to do with the message? Absolutely nothing. So here's, that was a particularly bad year, and we went 0-16. It's the only, only team in the history of the NFL that went, had a perfect record. And it was week 14, I remember it. Week 14, Dave, Dave Wilson, who's one of the founders of Kensington and another one of Dave Nelson's closest friends, we, we all started Kensington together. Dave's the chaplain. He's been the chaplain for 27 years now. We think he's the reason they stink. <laughs> We're trying to get rid of him. So Dave, uh, on the sidelines for years, he, he, he was a great athlete in his own right. He was a great college quarterback. Don Muehlbach is the long snapper for the, for the Lions. So he snaps for field goals and extra points and, and punts. And if you watch an NFL long snapper, they're snapping the whole game. They're, they're, they're trying to stay loose because, man, they, you know, you can win or lose a game on a bad snap. And so Dave, for years, is, catches Muehlbach's snaps. So if you watch an NFL snapper, it'd be like, so from me to you for the extra point, it'd be like if I took it and threw it as hard as I could at you. That's what a NFL snap is. Those guys just rifle it. You know, it's just, so on this particular day, the Lions were losing again. They were 0-13, and they were losing this game. And people were going, well, Dave's the chaplain. He's down taking snaps from Don right over here. And at one point, the only time it happened all season, the snap came really hard, and it came through his fingers and hit him in the face. And this guy from the first row, you know, because everybody's mad, because it, it, hor- it was horrible to be in, in, at, the, at Ford Field because people really turned against him. It just At the end, you couldn't even stand to be there. Uh, this guy in the first row stands up and looks down at Dave Wilson and he goes, you suck! Just like that. And that was, so this is after months of abuse and people said a lot worse stuff than that. Well, Don Muehlbach, who's the snapper, doesn't play a lot, but he is 6'6", 270 pounds. <laughs> he starts to climb, he starts to climb the stadium wall and he is going to pulverize this guy. Dave Wilson's about 5'10", 175 pounds. Dave jumps on his back <laughs> to try to stop him. He's like, Don, Don, like snap out of it, dude, because if Don goes up and hits that guy, he's, he's got a lawsuit on his hands. He's got assault. He's going he's gonna to he's gonna have, he's gonna have to go to the court. I mean, the whole thing. So Dave is literally leaping on this huge man's back, trying to hold him back. Now, when that happened years ago, I want to tell you, we, we, we still to this day laugh about that story. I mean, it just, it's hilarious. But here's what's not hilarious. What Dave and I realized is that there are millions upon millions of Christians and millions upon millions of people who are considering a relationship with God that all their life imagine that when God was paying attention to them, that God was saying, you stink. 
That's what you thought God was saying. And nothing could be farther from the truth. Because if you could hear the great crowd shouting, you know what you'd hear? You'd hear, I love you. Don't give up. Yeah, you're a goofball, but I love you anyway. I use goofballs. You see, if you could hear what God's really saying, He's saying, I love you, I bless you, I want you, you're my beloved son, you're my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. This is what, if this is where we are right now, we're not at K2. We are at the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem in Mount Zion, where Jesus Christ has made his presence known to us. And I want you to hear it. I want you to hear him calling out his love and his care for you. So do you realize what this means? Levin, when you sit down and have a conversation with somebody today or even after this service, you've got to realize that every human being that you will ever encounter for the rest of your life is a divine encounter. It's an encounter orchestrated by God. And that person is as precious to God, not just as you are, but of the people that you love and care so deeply about, that, that how, that's how God feels about that person, only infinitely more. And the fact that there's nothing we do now that is mundane. Everything we do matters. And it's gigantically important to God. The same God who met Moses at Mount Sinai in fire and gloom is the same God we live before right now, only this time as we recognize in His presence, we recognize Jesus the Son. You know what I think would happen if this were true? I think we started living in this new reality. I think our lives would be so radically different. You know, K2 has done an amazing work. But you know what? Our best work is ahead. You hear me? Let's all say that together. Our best work is ahead. Because the Holy Spirit is living amongst us. And we are surrounded by this great throng of witnesses, of myriads upon myriads of angels, and the church of the firstborn, and the God who loves us and whose Son is our mediator and our defender and our Savior. Therefore, don't let your depression stop you. Don't let your difficulties stop you. Don't let your addictions stop you. Don't let your critical spirit of others stop you. Let Jesus continue to transform us so that we as a community of people who know where we are and and under whose authority we live under and whose blessing and of the great throng of people that, that celebrate and worship us, and it hit me today, whether, whether Ken goes into the presence of Jesus soon or not, Ken Nelson, all of a sudden it hit me. And again, I've done four services, God, I don't even remember whether I said this or not, forgive me. But I remember when Dave met Susie, I never thought Dave would get married. He was too picky. <laughs> he met Susie and he was instantly in love with her. And I remember feeling a, a, a deep sadness then. I thought... Susie will never get to know Dave's mom. And I remember when Mariah was born, I remember feeling sad again, because Dave's not a, a partner, labor, and ministry. He's, a, he's the brother of my heart. And when Ashlyn Dawn and then Caleb, and all of a sudden it's, it's hit me over time that I was thinking about it all wrong. Dave's mother, who's an amazing woman, has been cheering us on all these years. She's part of the church of the firstborn, part of the Spirit's made righteous and perfect in heaven and the angels. You realize we're not alone. You are not alone. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to feel alone this week because that's just the way it is. What I am telling you, there are forces in the universe and in this world that don't want us to believe this. They want us to continue to live mundane lives, to be more concerned about the football game this afternoon than the blessed person who God's brought next to us, who is of infinite value. So as we come to the end of this worship, by the way, at the end of Hebrews 12, it says this, Therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. We've already done that today. And as we were worshiping God, who is awesome, He's not just awesome. You know what else He is? If this is true, He's close. He's attainable. He is known in Jesus Christ. This is what is so incredible. And so as we worship here at the end, and we sing a song that's meant a lot to me lately by Phil Wickham called At Your Name. 
Here's what I want you to understand tomorrow as you're just singing this. When you wake up tomorrow morning and you, you start getting ready for work or go to school, whatever, I want you to hear the morning skies and the morning sun shout the glory of God. And I want you to see the heavens filled with the praises of God as you're driving to work. And I want you to see the presence of Jesus in every human being you encounter. And you know what will happen if we do this? Then our lives will be unbelievably rich. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this wonderful time. Just so grateful for this. And as we get ready to receive the offering and celebrate the great things that you've done, uh, by the way, as I'm praying, it's legal for the Connections team to come down <laughs> with your eyes open. Thank you, Lord, that we can just come into your presence with joy and hilarity and amazement that you love us, that you care for us, you hear us. And I want to thank you for this team of men and women that I have loved for so long and prayed and gotten such great joy from that you would do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or imagine in our lives and in this world that you'd be glorified, Jesus, as we celebrate our living in the presence, as we live in Mount Zion in the city of the living God. Wow. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the Connections folks are going to go ahead and receive the offering. And uh, if you're visiting with us, you know, I mean, that, that's one thing. But for a lot of you who are with us, uh, this giving thing, is a, it's, a, it's an act of worship. It's a response that we're on mission together and that God is doing great things. Let me tell you, from an outsider's perspective, this is a place that is worthy joining together to see what Christ can do in us. So we're going to do one last song. You may or may not have heard it. It's been on the radio a couple times. Uh, but we're going to walk you through the chorus here. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Let's do that again. Oh Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble At your name Angels will bow The earth will rejoice Your people cry out Oh Lord of all the earth We shout your name, shout your name Filling up the skies with praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord, that's your name, the morning breaks in glory, that's your name. your story and your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out oh lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies with endless praise endless praise
I'm going to dismiss you in 30 seconds. Just want to, I want, to, want you to remember, you know when you watch your kids play and you're rooting so hard for your kids to, to make a great play or a great, you know, something in a, whether it's a math competition or a basketball game or a, you know, school concert or wh- whatever it is, and, and they don't quite make it. You, you, remember, you remember that sound you make? When, when, just it's like, like when, the, when the ball just goes off their fingertips and everybody goes... Oh, I want you to understand that the great throng of heaven and the Lord Jesus Christ himself, when you fall, they're not going, you stink. They're going, come on, what are they doing? Oh, and then, if you've ever been a part of a great, a great crowd that really supports their team, there's, there's a moment of quiet after the ah, and then what, then what starts to happen? Do you remember? Come on, everybody, come on, do it with me. And this is what, this is what's happening, like, even... When you fall, the cheering is going on. That this is our reality. This is reality of those of us who are in Christ. Hallelujah. So wonderful to be with you. Can't think of any place in the world I'd rather be than right here. Have a great time. See the reality this week, okay? All right. Oh, hey, hang on. I forgot. Uh, Discover 2 is right back in the corner uh, with Heather. If, if you're new to, to check in, and also next week we start a new series. I hope you can come. If you're not too busy, it's called but I'm so busy, okay, about how to kind of manage your life and see Christ working in the busyness of your life. See you guys.